Well, good evening, and welcome to evening prayer. If you have a candle, I'll invite you to safely light it with me now. Let us invoke the light of Christ's presence in the midst of the darkness. Apparently I blew a little too hard. Try that again. The opening scripture sentence for tonight's service is from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. You need endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. Today we will be commemorating the uh, former Archbishop of Uganda, the Anglican Archbishop whose name was Janani Luam. More about that soon. As we continue in troubled times, we pray, Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish. O Lord, I call to you. Come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And now we sing an evening hymn, number 30 in the common praise, God that made us earth and heaven. God that made us earth and heaven, darkness and light, who that day foretold has given for us the night. send us holy dreams and hopes attend us this live long night. Guard us waking, guard us sleeping, and when we die, proclamation of the word. We are having the readings that are prescribed for this commemoration, this commemoration which happens each year on this day. And our first reading is from the letter to the church, uh, the ancient letter to the church, the letter of the Hebrews. We are reading from chapter 10 verses 32 through to the end of the chapter. 
but recall those earlier days when, after you had been enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with sufferings, sometimes being publicly exposed to abuse and persecution, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion for those who were in prison, and you cheerfully accepted the plundering of your possessions, knowing that you yourselves possessed something better and more lasting. Do not therefore abandon that confidence of yours. It brings a great reward. For you need endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For yet, in a very little while, the one who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. My soul takes no pleasure in anyone who shrinks back. But we are not among those who shrink back and so are lost but are among those who have faith, and by faith we are saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Something that we may remember from evening prayer from the Book of Common Prayer is the Magnificat, the words of Mary after she learned she was going to be the mother of the Savior. And the Bible study group asked, could we have that again at Evensong? Here we are. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Magnificat in a moment as well, because it certainly fits with today's commemoration. Mary sang, My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For, for he, he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent away empty. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. song we're going to sing for you next is called Chester.
So when thy truth began its race, it touched and glanced on every hand. Very appropriate song, not only for tonight's readings, but also the upcoming readings for Sunday, when we'll hear the creation story again. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 24, beginning at verse 9. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, then they will hand you over to be tortured and will put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away. And they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved, and this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all nations. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the Anglican Communion, Anglicans globally, of commemorations. Commemorations are times when we remember people uh, who have uh, led lives of extraordinary faith or have some other significance in their lives, and we remember them on a certain day every year, often the day of their death. And today we remember a modern, mo a modern martyr, one who died for his faith. So today we remember Anglican Archbishop Janani Luam. Here's what I read. The commemoration for tonight is a very sad one. In 1972, Colonel Idi Amin overthrew the elected government of Uganda, and his regime soon became known throughout the world for its atrocities. The Anglican Archbishop was Janani Luam a gentle, cheerful man, whose instincts were all toward loyalty and political non-involvement. But Amin's injustices finally moved Luam to protest. On February 16, 1977, he was ordered to meet with Amin in a personal interview. That same night, after presenting to Amin a formal protest, on behalf of the church and in the name of Christ, Luam was murdered. And so we remember Janani Luam. We also at the same time remember the Christian martyrs of Uganda who perished much earlier in 1886 for their shared witness in the love and inviolable justice of God. One of the reasons why it's important that we have commemorations is because it keeps us grounded in the history of our faith, and it keeps us also grounded in the breadth and depth of the gospel message and its implications. What I mean by that is, in good times, it's easy to lose sight of the gospel's importance against injustice. And in times of difficulty, we also look to commemorations to see that we are not alone in our quest for justice in the name of Christ. We read the scriptures and we read about the injustices happening in the days of the Roman Empire. We see 
the disciples as a people who were a part of a people who were oppressed by the Roman Empire. We see the injustice of Jesus' trial, his unjust execution. And in the midst of all this, we are reading the Gospels that are by name good news. They are good news because the Gospel message offers us a check and balance against our own human nature. Left to our own, the kingdoms of this world often go off course. Or if we think we're supposed to blend those two, the two may go off course together. The gospel message stands apart because it is above human leadership, it is above human government, not a replacement for it. The gospel message stands apart because it is above my own willfulness and inclinations. And the gospel message, when we look to it, points the way to a God that is beyond even our understanding. So here we are, reading tonight of someone who spoke very gently in the name of the gospel for the sake of his people who were being oppressed and who was included in that oppression and became a martyr. I said that I would come back to the Magnificat. Mary's words, when she hears that she will be the mother of the Messiah, Mary's words, my soul doth magnify the Lord, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. And then she goes on to say, he hath put down the mighty from their seat and exalted the humble and the weak. This is a political statement. This is a statement about the oppressed. This is a statement about a God who works through us to cause change. A God who inspires those who work for justice. And so, this is a passage of scripture, Luke chapter 1, that was made illegal a few times in our history at different places. It was made illegal because the those who were oppressed were citing it, they were reading it, they were making posters about it. And those who were in power didn't like all this talk about them losing their seats and their thrones. So they made scripture illegal. Even in some of the cases, governments that said that they weren't opposed to the scriptures, how interesting. And so tonight, as we commemorate the uh, one that we commemorate on this day every year across the Anglican Communion. Let us remember that this is indeed good news because in the gospel message we find the hope for humanity. We find the contrasting message against our worldly nature and we find the guidance of God leading us to a better kingdom, not an earthly kingdom, but the kingdom of God, which is everywhere, dwells in our hearts and in dwelling in our hearts affects our actions even as we live in the midst of our earthly kingdoms. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Well, let's affirm our faith with words that have been being used to affirm this faith for thousands of years. The hero Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray using the intercessions and thanksgiving for evening. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, We pray to you, Lord, that this evening may be good and holy and peaceful. Together we pray. We, we pray, pray to you, Lord, Lord, that the work we have done this day and the people we have encountered may bring us closer to you. Together we pray. 
we pray to you, Lord, that we may be forgiven our sins and offenses. Together we pray. We pray to you, Lord, that we may hear and respond to your call to peace and justice. Together we pray. We pray to you, Lord, that you will sustain the faith and hope of the weary, the lonely, and the oppressed. And we take a moment now in the silence of our hearts, or aloud, to offer our personal prayers to you. Together we pray. We, we pray, pray to you, Lord. Lord that you will strengthen us in your service and fill our hearts with longing for your kingdom. Together we pray. We pray to you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we pray the collect, a prayer specifically for today. O God, by the blood of Christian martyrs you planted in the heart of Uganda, the seed of a strong and living church, and you confirmed its growth under the hand of tyranny. By the witness of your servant, Janani Luam, may we who cherish their remembrance before you be valiant in our witness against the terrors of unjust rulers, and remain steadfast in the love by which you bind us to yourself through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now we are going to sing another hymn, maybe familiar. Jesus, lover of my soul. Some of the lyrics in verse 3 are, Lo, I faint, I sink, I fall. On thee I cast my care. Wilt thou not regard my call? Wilt thou not accept my prayer? Lo, I faint, I sink, I fall. Lo, on thee I cast my care. Reach me out thy gracious hand, while I of thy strength receive. 
stand, dying and behold, I live. Well, as we continue with this evening, and prepare to lay ourselves down to sleep. May these words that we've just sung ring in our hearts and our ears. Lo, I faint, I sink, I fall. Lo, I cast, my, I cast on thee my care. Reach me out thy gracious hand, while I of thy strength received. Hoping against hope I stand, dying, and behold, I live. For there is no power greater than God. There is no hope higher than the gospel. There is no strength we can receive that will give us more than the strength we receive from knowing Christ Jesus is indeed by our side, the Christ who has been by the side of people for faithful generations, and who will be by the side of those for generations to come and on into eternity. This night, my prayer for you is that you will have a blessed rest knowing Christ is with you, taking comfort in the presence of the Holy Spirit, and arising tomorrow refreshed. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night, a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. Amen.